Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Raising the Standard. Today's episode, I'm joined by special guest, Danny Vega. Let me tell you a little bit about Danny as we get into this episode that I'm calling Fat Fueled and Faith Empowered. So Danny received his bachelor's degree from Columbia University in New York. He played football there. He then went on to get a master's of science in human performance from the University of Florida, and he also worked with their championship men's basketball team. In 2006, Danny became a strength and conditioning coordinator for VCU basketball, helping them become the 2007 conference champs. He's also been ranked a top power lifter and indoor rower. And Danny has been a Christian for a long time. In 1996 is when he started calling himself a Christian. But as he says in, in his own words, it was 2020 that led him the, to see that he was not following Christ as a disciple. And in November of 2021, he had an encounter with God that renewed his faith and his walk. And since then, he's learned a lot about the lack of obedience and not walking in the spirit that has plagued the modern church and that he saw in his own life. And this is why he says we're lacking fruit. It's his mission right now to spread the message and wake the church out of the spiritual coma that we find ourselves in. And he submitted himself and his plans to God. Danny has made it his mission now to release this message, be really open about his faith. And I've started to see this in his social media posts over the past year. I saw him take a turn where he was becoming more and more outspoken about what he believes and how he has been recommitting himself to Christ. I'm so excited to have this conversation, to bring it to you. And guys, in this conversation, if you guys know Danny, he is an expert. He is at expert level status when it comes to all things keto, carnivore, and bodybuilding powerlifting for that space. He's been a speaker at KetoCon. He's someone that contributes on a national level to those topics, and he truly is a subject matter expert. So we talk about everything here from his faith. We do get into the keto discussion. We talk about strategies and tactics of how to ease into keto. What are the best protocols for fasting? Those were things that were personally I was really interested in because I've been a follower of intermittent fasting. And honestly, as a result of this conversation, I'm switching up my approach based on some of the science that Danny drops on this episode. And lastly, I'll let you know that we end where he drops a bomb on us and he tells us about a new direction he's heading in. And I believe this is the first podcast where he shared that. So there's some big news coming up at the end of the podcast about the direction that Danny's taking, what he's doing with his current podcast, his current platform, and where he's going next. Guys, don't miss this episode. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Raising the Standard, Leadership, Mindset, and Development for You, the Kingdom Man. Guys, I got a great episode lined up for you right here. I am joined by my friend, Danny Vega. And Danny, I want to welcome you to the show. Great to have you on here and connect with you, brother. Thank you so much, brother. I'm, I'm honored to be here, man. And, and um, man, we talked for an hour before we even hit record, so it's, <laughs> I can't imagine what we're going to come up with while we record, so it's good. Yeah, it's going to be awesome, man. You got a great story. So what I want to do, Danny, is I want to introduce you to the audience. For those that don't know you, um, if you could walk us through a little bit of your story, what you're currently doing, I want to get into your backstory. You got an amazing trajectory and what the Lord's doing in your life, where he's leading you. And what I love about our conversation earlier is the process that God has you in. And I think there's a lot of learning in there that we can give the guys today. So Go ahead, if you could walk us through a little bit of you, where who you are and, and where you came from. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. And, you know, usually when, when I'm talking about my background, I focus a lot on, you know, what I did as far as performance and, and you know, sports and um, my interests. But I have to also include in this, I kind of have to include, I'm not going to give my whole testimony, but I will give like kind of, I have to include that. So, um, you know, born and raised in Miami, I was born um, and I was a Catholic growing up until I was 15 and I was saved in a Pentecostal church in Miami when I was 15. Um, I played football in high school. I did really well there. I knew that I wanted to play college football. I was getting recruited by all types of, you know, good schools, you know, UCF, Rice, Naval Academy, um, Missouri. 
And then here comes Columbia. And I didn't even know who Columbia University was. I didn't know that I didn't, I thought they were in DC. I always tell people, I, I don't know, District of Columbia. Um, and come to find out, like I go to an information session that the, that the, actually the running back coach was in charge of recruiting the state of Florida. So it was, it was meant to be. And, um, and I saw that it was in New York city and I, and I just like, and then I went on my, on my visit and I fell in love. And so I ended up going to Columbia, um, fantastic decision, um, academically, socially being exposed to people, types of people that I've never been exposed to, um, you know, just a whole different upper echelon type of people too, that I, you know, never knew growing up, growing up and, um, you know, loved football. And then, you know, going into grad school, I, I, the reason why I went to grad school was because I was kind of the teacher's pet in the weight room. You know, my, my strength coach, I loved him and, um, he left me after my sophomore year to go to UNC. He was the head strength coach for UNC basketball. And then he went on to coach the Timberwolves. This, the, he was the head strength coach for the Timberwolves for several years. Um, and so, you know, I called him up when I got to UF and I told him what I, my plans were and he was trying to convince me not to do it, which I thought was funny. Um, but I said, you know, you can't convince me not to do this. I love this. And, and, um, and so I went to University of Florida. I worked with um, the football team for the first eight months, just kind of a grunt. And then I got um, promoted to the basketball facility, started working with, with basketball and then designing the programs for men's and women's golf and men's and women's tennis. And um, the timing was great. We won the national championship in 20, 2006. Um, and um, in 2006 was the year that I was graduating. So our assistant head coach gets offered the job at VCU in Virginia, in Richmond. And he ends up taking me as a strength coach. And I, it was just an amazing experience because you know we we had the best record in school history conference history uh we beat duke in the tournament you know they they kind of wrote an article about me what i was kind of doing differently to to prepare them and um but after about a year and a half of that, i was financially i just was like this is this is not a great you know it's, it's it's a it's a hard life and it's not it's not a it's a way of life that's what my coach used to say you know because you're always with the team and i i was single but i knew that this wasn't going to be the lifestyle for me to be in this life all the time. Just from seeing the coach, you know, he was leave the house at five, get home at 11, rinse and repeat, you know? Um, so I came back home to Miami and I got into the corporate world and I did that and I did very well until 2016. Um, 2016, I basically found the ketogenic diet and it kind of, you know, reignited my passion for nutrition and all that. And um, it actually helped me with my job. I've been a sales guy most of my career. And um, I, I had increased, you know, productivity. My joints felt better because I, I was a power lifter and I, I had been really beat up from that. And I played on, on AstroTurf, you know, the old AstroTurf in college. So, I, you know, my body was beat up, but I felt so much better. And, you know, started doing podcasts and things like that. And long story short, in 2018, um, I decided to leave the corporate world and I, we started fat field family you know i i was really focused on the athletic side the performance side of things but then also with my wife really focusing on the family like you know how do we get families to eat healthy and and all that but we people were asking us to share these things because we'd have people over and they'd be like you know um why do how did we not know this like how do you know all of this and and they're like you should share this with people and we started to think like, it's not just the nutrition, it's not just the fitness. So when we created Fat Feel Family, we were like, okay, what are the, the five like areas? And so it was obviously nutrition, fitness, and then there was parenting because, you know, that, that the way you parent them, education, you know, the, the, the type of education that they're receiving, um, and then mindset, you know, really training them to slowly over time, increasing the load over their lifetimes to prepare them to have a mindset to do hard things and all that. Um, and, you know, so, so we've been doing that for the past several years. Um, and now to bring it back to my, my spiritual walk, because I was saved when I was 15 college, you know, kind of slowly got away from the Lord, you know, kind of, he let, he let me do that. He let me do my thing. And then I really, as I became a father, that, that really brought me back. But I, there's been 
periods and periods of just like st taking it to the next level, becoming closer to him as I sought him more. And in 2000, November 3rd of 2021 was a whole new, I, I consider it basically my, my, my real being saved because I, I called myself a Christian for all those years, but, um, and, and, and that, that's when I really said, I dedicate my life to you, everything to you, use me however you want to use me. And ever since I've done that, it's gotten very difficult. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, he's like, he's like, all right, I, this is, you know, and, yeah. and the way I think about it is this, like, uh, because of that, like, I, I feel honored, obviously, because he, he, he believes that, you know, that I'm meant for more. And then I also feel the same way, like, you know, what did you think was going to happen if you, if you want him to use you, you don't think you need to prepare yourself. You got to, it's like boot camp. You know, you get, you get, you do boot camp for just, you know, being a soldier, you know, you got to, you got to do spiritual boot camp. So that's kind of where I've been in the last several years and just really learning, having lots of opportunities um, to rely on him more and, um, and, and get away from my old immature um, falsely grandiose and falsely, you know, uh, overconfident self when it, where I would think that anything in my life was due to me. Wow. Wow. So, well, there's a lot I want to dig into there, but let's go to, um, you know, what was it in 2021 that caused this change? Cause you have this foundation in your life. You're, you're brought up, you have this experience with the Lord. Uh, and then, you know, we all go through different seasons and stuff, but what was it? Because as a family man, like you were, you were following the Lord, but something something changed in 2021. What was the catalyst for that? And how's that showing up? Yeah, man. So I, you know, I guess if you go back to 2020, I had spent almost a year starting this this company, this new company that that I really felt good about, you know, and, and obviously there's a lot of lessons there, but be, like, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't don't be surprised when businesses fail. That's that's the life of an entrepreneur. Um but because of that, it kind of after the aftermath when that business failed was a depression that I had never been in, in depression. I never I had never been depressed. I never knew what it was to be depressed. I look back now and I'm like, there's a lot of things that I've been able to experience that have given me a better understanding of what it means to be depressed, for example, now. because I if I had to look at it, I was probably depressed in August and I didn't notice until December. And when I noticed in December, I was excited because I was like, oh, I'm depressed. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Well, now that you know, it doesn't just go away. Uh, and so um, it took me, you know, that that year, 2021, um, you know, I did, I did, you know, 40 year of uh, a 40 mile walk, my 40th birthday. Um, I did, you know, 75 hard. I basically started, I did the whole year of 75 hard and there were lots of steps along the way that for me, like the physical challenges really are a really, um, easy doorway for me to get into fixing my thoughts in my mind. And, um, and basically that, that helped me kind of realize because I was, I remember saying to myself, like, why am I not as productive? Why am I not, you know, um, there's certain areas of my life, habits, new habits that, that are, that are disrupt, you know, destructive and old, getting rid of old habits that always serve me, you know, like things like, you know, my wife never woke up before me, you know, things like that, where my wife would be awake already reading her Bible and I'll stumble out of bed. And mind you, it's not like I'm sleeping in. Cause I used to wake up at four 45, you know, like, and now I'm waking up at like 637, which is like unheard of. And, you know, cause she, she never liked to wake up early, but once I turned her on to it, she was, and she continues to do it to this day. So things like that. And then, you know, putting a lot of, um, definitely putting a lot more, um, of a load on my wife's sh shoulders than she should have carried. And I think, um, for anybody who's listening to this, it's better, it's always good to repeat it in case you haven't heard it enough times, like marriages fail usually when the, the man doesn't do his job and he forces the woman to do his job. Um, and it's not just financially. It's also, you know, you got to be that first one up. You got to be like, she didn't, she, by the time she got out of bed, the coffee was, was, was done. That was like 
kind of she wouldn't get out of bed until the coffee was done. Like, so I know it sounds trivial, but these are the type of things that like it just it's what it takes, you know, like like it's awesome to be a man. I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, you know, I couldn't be a woman, but like it's a responsibility too. And, you know, there were just some things that just led to me just breaking down in my in my bathroom on November 3rd and just crying ugly tears and um and you know kind of every single step along this way like every new revelation every new awakening to something there's always like a period of excitement and all that but then it gets in the gritty the nitty gritty and then like yeah. you kind of yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely challenging because, you know, you, you start to be asked to do more and then you're like, I never thought I would be able to, you know, be asked to do this much. And then there's more. And then you have to also deal with, you know, the enemy whispering in your ear, like, yeah, but that ain't nothing compared to what's, what's been asked of other people. So how, what does that say about you, you know? And so it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, it just goes to show that like, your life, um, it never ends. There's no finish line. And I'm grateful for it because, for example, nothing that's happening in the world is, is relevant to me. You know, like I know that, like, you know, people tell me all the time because we're in, you know, the health space and all that stuff. And, and it's like, did you hear they're going to be vaccinating the meat? You know, and it's like, okay, I'm like, I'm like, I I'm going to tell you where I come from there. Like, you're probably not going to like it. You're not going to be satisfied with it, but you know, I don't consent to any of that. And you know, my, my lack of fear comes from my faith in God. That is not how I'm going to die. If I will die, it's going to be through persecution. And I already know about that. So I'm prepared for it, you know? So, um, so there's like, there's definitely, I personally prefer to be going through the battles that I'm going through than to be deceived by this like puppet master situation going on in the world where they basically direct you to, this is what you need to be afraid of now. This is what you need to care about now. And it's like, I would never want to be, I it, it would be like, I'd rather know the truth and we know the truth. We, we know who wins and all that. And we know that that's the main story. You know, a lot of people think that's not that, that is the main story, you know? So when you look at the world that way, you just, Nothing can surprise you. Um, but again, the personal battles, the relationships, the just the in and out of your everyday life, it, it can get it, it can get difficult, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love hearing you explain it because we're not glossing anything over to yeah. say, hey, come to Christ and everything gets better, mm -hmm. right? Um, come to Christ and learn how to die. Learn yeah. how to die to yourself. Yeah. Learn how to lay it down. And we're not and prepared for that explaining. in the modern church, we're not prepared for that. That's a problem. You know, I agree. I agree. It's it's a message that's lacking in superficial Christianity where we only hear promises. Yeah. Um, it's like I call it fortune cookie Christianity. We <laughs> only good. hear what we want to hear. Yeah. Um, but no one's really talking about the you know, we all want to go to the the conference where we can learn, you know, how to become our best self and all the <laughs> yeah. all the promises, which are which are real. Yeah, the promises are real. But no one no one wants to go to the death to self conference or the pick up your cross yeah, conference. Yeah, and spiritual, spiritual but, yeah. Spiritual warfare conference. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you're going to follow the Lord, you're going to go through that training. You know, I, I identify with what you say because there's been different seasons in our life, you know, just like you. Um, I was talking to my wife this week and we go through these seasons, you know, there's been season of seasons of just like, hey, it's been kind of mediocre. We're just doing life. And when we both press in and we really start following the Lord and there's some really exciting stuff happening in my family right now, that's when we experience attack. That's when we experience like the enemy's like, oh, you want to take that new territory? I don't think so. And um, it's easier when you're when you're living in mediocrity or you're just checking boxes. It's definitely like, yeah. But I, I see the I see the process also when we look at, you know, the way Joshua takes the promised land, like the Lord promises him everywhere your foot treads. It's a step by step process. Right. It's like you're going to have to battle for each step. And that's what you're doing. That's what we're doing. And um, I love it. I love hearing it because it's the it's the real deal. It's also not grim. It's yeah, no, not light. at all. Yeah, not at all, man. <laughs> it's full of light. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you, so I love the process. <laughs> there's times that you, you know, you, you think of like the, the those cruise control times and, and you, 
you kind of wish for those days sometimes, but then you realize like, like you're, you're missing, you were so deceived back then. Like, I remember like the type of sermons that were like really hitting me back then. We're not really what God, you know, they they weren't biblical and things like that. It, it, and, and, um, you know, if you don't allow these things to happen now, I'd rather t- get through these battles now because, you know, I, I just, I just pray for the world because th- there's so many people that are just going to be so surprised. And when you think of like, how jesus talks about like even the elect can be deceived you know and and i see that like and and we're very comfortable um with our 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 lives and with our walks and and like what you said about you guys deciding to do stuff it's so true like the minute you do that he'll hit you with temptation if that doesn't work he'll hit you with scandal he'll hit you with car issues house issues you know injuries like and then he'll just try to wear you down, you know, and um, and the and the rest of the world is willing to help, even if they don't, they're maybe not be doing it on purpose, but they are influenced to help that plan. So, yeah, man, it's 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 cool. I'm cool with it. <laughs> well, listen, I've been following you on social for a while and I've watched the change. I noticed when you talked about November, I'm like, OK, something was happening because I saw you talking about your faith more. You were like drawing a line in the sand and putting yourself out there. And I, I also saw you become really passionate about, you know, and you're in a you're in a great space because as an influencer running your own business, not beholden to other people watching what you say or keeping you in line, you can basically speak your mind and say what you want to say. And I saw you going into this territory. And, you know, obviously you're a real man and we've we've been on some joint projects in the past talking about biblical masculinity. But I saw this passion arise in you again. Um, Tell me where that comes from. And just, you know, this passion you have to see men rise up and and the way you're leading your family. Break that down for me a little bit. Man, I got to tell you, like, obviously, I like to observe the world. I like to observe what's happening and see, you know, um, grateful that I've been able to talk about these really important subjects and and just kind of get my best friend's point of view and 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 you know one of the biggest catalysts was you know 2020 and everything from you know issues with you know your medical freedoms to issues with your children's freedoms um you know issues with the way they're school being schooled things like that and you would just look and if you paid attention you would just see that everybody who was speaking up was a woman and you're just like, what is going on? You know, like, why is it that every single, you know, rally is led by a woman, every, you know, um, you know, issues with like, whatever they get, they go to Congress and all those things is all women. And, and let me say, I, I have no problem with women doing this. Um, but it's just, this is, this is a man's job. This is a man's job. Like, and obviously I can't even believe this is an issue in 2023, but in 2023, like for me to even say that there are specific roles for males and and females, when we know them neurologically, psychologically, science can show these things, that there are specific traits that make males better at certain things and females better at certain things, Um, you know. um, And so that was a, a big issue for me because, you know, if I had to make a decision that would compromise my principles, I would say no. And you would think that's an easy thing to do, right? But a lot of people didn't, I guess they just lost, they lost the the perspective on that. And so I personally want to shake men out of that. And and obviously the, there's, um, I, I have friends that send me all the cool stuff that, you know, the stuff that the world is talking about, you know, like, like these motivational speakers that are, that are talking about masculinity and talking about, and it's like, but you don't, you can't stop here. Like, you know, if, if you stop with this worldview of like the worldly view of masculinity, you come way short. Um, and it's not, there are principles to it, but there's always, you're going to see that there's always like areas where it's like, ah, that's no, that's wrong. That, that area is wrong. You know, it's almost like a chink in the armor, like, like that, that moral, problem or that issue where they're not 
because the Bible is the ultimate truth and, and Jesus is the ultimate truth. So um, I personally tried to, to really do that. Like we started a, uh, a podcast, Biblical Manhood, and, and you know, it kind of like fizzled out because we did like five episodes and then we, um, we, we just, life got in the way. But I feel like that is something that, number one, you're going to just, that's the one truth that I think it just hits harder than any other ones. You know, uh, I know that a lot of people may have been asleep to certain things that are going on in the world or, or just to their own issues with their, you know, maybe their upbringing, whatever it is that, that, that allowed them to not really step into the man that they're supposed to be. Um, and people get to like this gate. I always like, there's like gates of truth, right? <laughs> and then they decide to stop here. But then like, what they don't know is that you got to keep going. There is a final gate and that is Jesus. It always ends there. And so like, that's what I've been trying to say with people, like in a friendly way, when we talk about like where they'll send me this person, this influencer, this, you know, personalities thing. And I'll say, you know, I totally agree with that, but like, we have to witness to these people because they, they're missing, like they're missing a big part of it. And there's certain times like, like, for example, like you'll wake up to a specific like conspiracy or something. There's certain ones that you can you can do that, you can see that, and then go back eventually to your your life where you're asleep. This is the one where if you truly get it and it starts to renew your mind, where you can never go to sleep again. You know what I mean? Like you can't you can't like people will will like all the stuff with the the medical stuff that's happened in the last couple of years. Like there are people that are they know all about that, but there's, they have blind spots because I think that they're missing, they're still caught up in like putting their faith in a man, for example, in politics, you know, that's a big one. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I get it. I mean, we have this, um, we subscribe to the Bible. We subscribe to Jesus as, like you said, ultimate truth. And, um, we start just playing in the world system, right? Like a man's going to save us is only we can vote for the right person everything will change. And meanwhile, everything's getting shaken. Everything's getting shaken. And so, yeah, I'm going to vote. I'm going to exercise my constitutional rights. But at the same time, that's not where my faith yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. That's not where my exactly. faith is when things when things hit the fan. So um, I love it, Danny. Let's talk a little bit about this. I mean, like you talk about the influencer space and like there's so many guys speaking to men. There's so much attention. I know we'll touch on social media. We got so many distractions and there's this message and that message and real men do this. And then there's another guy saying something else. And meanwhile, for Christian men that are getting these messages, how do you filter that? Or what's your advice? Because um, yeah, you're right. You know, there's principles. Some principles are principles. They're eternal and someone can, they're not exclusive to Christianity. Someone else can say that stuff and it's true. But I get fearful. I see I see a dangerous mixture when it can take us off course and it looks good. The wrapping paper looks good, but it's missing truth. And that's spiritual truth. That's eternal truth. So give me your thoughts on that. Just any comments you have about how to keep yourself safe in this space for the guys that are listening. And there's all these competing voices for our attention. When I started to um really get these real revelations the first time in my life and, and i i was just so blown away at how how patient god is with us because like when you start to learn things and um you're just like i can't believe you put up with me for all this time where i called myself a christian and you're just like no you're not you're not doing what i'm telling you so um look the way i could boil it down is this like people need to remember and just be intentional every day about the idea that your spiritual walk and your you know kind of yeah you're basically your spiritual life is your responsibility and so what because of the culture we have churches that are like you know celebrity pastors we have celebrity like influencer people that people just they hear it and they're like oh my gosh yes him have you heard about this guy and they they you have to test every spirit, you know, um, you have to test every spirit. So how do you do that? I picked up the Bible and my whole, you know, even since the Bible app, you know, like it was like every day, my, my daily devotional, and there's nothing wrong with doing your daily. I have multiple, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of devotionals that I've done in the Bible app, but that is 
like you said, that's what did you call it? Um, the type of Christianity. Well, are there, yeah, there there can't be fortune cookie fortune Christianity. Cookie Christianity. But I, I'm I'm glad you're getting into the word yeah. because I'm thinking. I hope he says the word here yeah. because that's what we need is we need the baseline. Yeah, right. And, that, and so what I did to know. Yeah, in, in October of 2020, no, October of 2021. It was it was right before that November 3rd. I. I picked up the Bible. I got the 1611 King James because I, I just thought it was cool and it was a big and and I picked that thing up on October the 15th and I finished it on March the 3rd. Okay. And I read the Bible as if it were one long storybook. And I got to tell you, man, like I, I was doing it for 75 hard. I had to read 10 pages a day and I was reading 10 pages of that big Bible a day. So I read the Bible in five months and, um, and yeah, like, and I read 14 extra books because it had like the Apocrypha, you know, like the 1611. Yeah, yeah. Um, were, were you speaking in Old English during that oh time Oh my too? gosh, dude. I had to, <laughs> not only was it in Old English, but it was, it was the, the language, the spelling was even more archaic yeah. than the regular King James. Yeah. So there was extra ease. I, I have a 1611. Oh, okay. So yeah. you know, like there's extra ease. To... <laughs> I don't read it, but I have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, deal, it's because it's like a fax, it's like a facsimile of the original. So it had all the original sure. artist stuff. So I thought it was beautiful. Um, and I just was like, like when you connect the whole Bible and you get away from, you start to peel away all of the trap that you thought it's literally traditions of men. It's like, you know, this is, you know, just things that you hear and that are in this cultural Christianity that we have that are not biblical. And the same thing goes for, you know, any type of person that, and I got to tell you, like, I'm grateful because my algorithm is awesome. You know, like I, I find new, really good Christian accounts, whether they're like manhood, fatherhood, marriage, like all the time. And like my, my algorithm is, is, is in the zone right now, you know, and you just got to curate your algorithm and be a, be intentional about it. Start to like delete the things that, that you don't like. And it'll, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll tailor. Yeah, um, but even yeah. with that, even with that, like you have to, you know, you, you, you can't take Unfortunately, you know, no, no, no offense to anybody. We, we can't trust anyone fully. We have to test everything that they say. Like we should be able to quote, um, you know, someone that we, that we don't agree with on anything because they got it right that one time. And the same way we should be able to say, like, I remember I, there's a quote that I like to use. Um, and it's basically a Noam Chomsky quote. You know who Noam Chomsky is? He's like, you know, he's a, he's a socialist and, but he talks about, it was a it was a censorship quote about like how, how the way that, you know, you, you can control people is basically you censor what can be spoken about, but you allow vigorous, you know, debate within that small thing. And I was like, that's brilliant. I, I agree with that. And the same thing goes with, if your favorite influencer, don't think that you have to buy lock stock into everything he does because at the end of the day, it's your responsibility. God's not going to be like, I'm sorry, just because, you know, you're, you're, you went to the church, you liked what he said on this, this, and this, your pastor is not the one responsible for your edification and your growth. It's, it's you. So I think that's the way it's the word. Yeah, that's so powerful. I love the responsibility message. And right now um, in the current culture and guys that are listening, like we want to encourage you, pick up your word yourself, spend time with Jesus, spend time in prayer. And don't just, you can't, like, we're talking to Danny Vega, who's a bodybuilder, like, right? Like you're, you're a master at nutrition. Danny, you can't build your body with one meal a week. No, can't no, be done. Man. So you can't go to church once a week or do a, a really simple devotion and just read a verse and just listen to something and play some Christian music, music and expect your life to have deep yeah, roots. This is, and that's what we should this be. This is after, how I start right? every day, right in this chair, right in this chair this is where I pray yeah. this is where awesome. I read the word. And, and it, it really is like, I just, I just really think just that one thing is just, just to pick up the Bible. I've already, this is my, this is my third Bible since that time. Cause I picked, I did the scriptures translation. Cause I thought it was cool. It was like, had a lot of Hebrew in it. I did that from March of last year to august of of last year march april may june august yeah yeah i did that one too in, in in five months and now this one i'm reading it because it's got a bunch of other stuff and but like i think it's really at least for the modern christian maybe may, even for a new believer to to just just look at 
going through the Bible from cover to cover, because I think you'll find, you know, we have this Old Testament, New Testament, you know, kind of per, like uh, perception when when it's not like Jesus is in the Old Testament, you know, and and I think that there's a lot that people don't that they miss because they're they're in the Gospels, they're in Paul's letters, and that's awesome. But there's a lot of gospel in the Old Testament, you know? Oh, yeah. The Jesus is in every book, every book. So um, that's amazing, man. Thanks for just the inspiration of going through your Bible. That's uh, that's really motivational. I want to go to I want to go to the to your area of expertise, because I've noticed this in my life. You, you said it already. Um, but Danny, I'll just tell you, like for myself, I noticed that when I'm physically on point, everything's better in life. Right. Like there is a direct correlation to being, you know, tight physically with my regimens, my daily disciplines. And it spills over into every area of life, including my spiritual life. And when I tend to be sloppy in one area, I notice that I can be sloppy in other areas. So obviously, as men, we see that link there. I want you to expand on that for yourself, what you observe in the people you train. But what's that link look like um, for you? Take it wherever you want to go with it physical to spiritual spiritual to physical so the first thing that that makes me think of is um my buddy mike mutzel fantastic podcast great human being one of my best friends in the world he came to my house like a few years ago to re record a podcast with me and we were talking about the link between you know emotional um which spiritual is right there um health and and um and mental health and and you know physical health and i was talking about how all of the insights that I've gotten over the last several years of, you know, since I've eaten well, and he asked me point blank, like, do you think it's possible to have the insight first and then focus on the physical? Or do you think it, you have to have the physical taken care of first, and then you can get all these new insights and these new revelation. And I would say that maybe there's an exception to the rule of people gaining these insights. Like a lot of people could have like a, a spiritual insight when they're like ODing, you know, but, but in reality, for most of us, we won't even be able to think straight. If our brains are not healthy, if we're not putting the right food in our bodies, if we're not moving around, like those are things that like, think about it. everything that, that God intends for us is good. Like he gives us this body. It's meant to be moved. We have to move it. Like he gives us this natural food. It's, it's amazing for us. It like just looking at what cows and all these other animals do to grass, to turn it into delicious, healthy, you know, nutrition, that's just a miracle in itself. So like that is a huge component to your spiritual health, because like you said, you will be able to think clearer. You will. Um, I remember Chris Bell said um, when they all like switched to like carnivore, that the house got, you know, in the family with their parents, everybody was doing it. And there was a lot less anger in the house, you know, like, like people were chilled out because when you're not no like having, angry, yeah, no hanger, no blood sugar swings, none <laughs> of that. So that's a big yeah. part of it. And then the other part that I just, you know, that this made me think of is, you know, I have a, a guy who he just is one of the best mindset coaches that, that he's just, he's just amazing. Um, uh, Tom Shea. And he is, he wrote unbreakable three simple things. And you know, he'll have these high performing CEO types who will hire him for coaching. They want to take their team to the next level. You know, they want to, they want to 10 X their business, whatever it is that they want to do. And he'll go through these. He's got the five pillars, which is, you know, relationships, spiritual, um, relationships, spiritual, intellectual um, value, like kind of like the, the financial and physical. And, you know, he, he, it, a lot of these times, these, these people are super overstressed, their relationships are suffering, they're in terrible physical shape. And so, you know, these guys are hiring him as a consultant, thinking he's going to give them like some Navy SEAL wisdom, 10 point plan for, for the, for them to implement and, you know, you know, bark at their teams. And he's like, all right, we're going to run a marathon. And like, that's the other side of it. So like, obviously putting the right stuff in your body, moving and all that, but the other thing is choosing to challenge yourself to really see what you're capable of because, and, and, you know, there's a lot of ways you can do that. But like I said before, I think the physical challenges, um, they just, especially if you're alone, they just really lead to like some interesting and um, 
phenomenal breakthroughs. And that's why I always am trying to search. Granted, like you have to think about your relationships at the same time too. Like there, you can go overboard with that. Cause when I was um, powerlifting and, you know, we had a newborn and, and like I had to leave home, you know, cause my wife was about to have the second baby, you know, I was in the middle of a powerlifting meet. And so like, those are the things you have to balance that too. You can't get caught up in that. But, but the, the bottom line is that the physical stuff and like, I love, maybe it's just the people I'm hanging out with, but I love how the last good two to three years, a lot of people I know I have, I know a lot of people that I'm friends with have, have focused on the importance of sleep, you know, artificial light, you know, these are things that, that they're like low hanging fruit. You don't have to go to the gym six times a week. You literally could just eat a more sensible diet, walk every day, stop being on your phone all day and focus on your sleep and you will see your life infinitely get better. So it's not just, it's not just working out and lifting. I mean, so that that I think is is crucial to any man. You're just not going to operate anywhere near your potential if you if you're not doing those things. Let's talk about keto for a minute because I've I've done it in the past. Um, more energy, more clarity, everything you said. My joints don't hurt as much. Um, but I notice for myself, I can do it for a matter of time, and then it starts to become a little bit more difficult. And the times that I have done it, I've really enjoyed it. Um, and you have a lot of longevity with this. So is there benefit? Um, for guys that are listening and for myself to do it shorter spurts, can that be done? Um, and what's your secret to, you know, the longevity of staying on a diet like this? This is such a great question. I love this question. So uh, first I'll say that if you're going to do keto, um, I would, if it's, especially if it's your first time, if it's not your first time and you're just cycling back into it, then this is not as relevant. But I would say for that first time, first of all, Make sure that you're not competing for anything, specifically training towards something. That's the first thing. Second of all, especially if you live like in cold weather, it's going to be better for you to do this in the, in the cold months. Um, it just lends itself better to more naturally how things were, um, you know, when we didn't have, we weren't able to fly Chiquita bananas from South America, you know, um, in the winter. And, um, and then, you know, you have to don't look at it with the diet mentality, even if you want to cut fat, because that's, it's really associated with cutting fat. So the reason I say that is don't just lower your calories and go keto, because that's going to be a lot because, you know, I can share a million studies about how the more you lower your carbs, the more you have this metabolic advantage, your body burns more fat, um, especially if you're coming from a high insulin background where you're, you're already like insulin resistant, you, you, you'll see more, even more of a, increased calorie burn because you're basically causing mitochondrial uncoupling. Like you're having the amount of energy that's going into those cells is nowhere near the amount of energy going out. It's like you're revving a car while you're in park. So, um, so, and then, you know, make sure that you supplement electrolytes, all of that. That being said, um, you know, if you're training for something really intense where, you know, you're, you're doing multiple repeated bouts of, of activity with short rest, Generally speaking, like if we weren't able to like create sugar out of fat, we would have not survived as a species. There's times in, you know, fasting, that's just, just one example. Um, so we're able to create sugar out of fat for these like spurts of energy. And we have all types of like our, our adrenal system is, is really involved with that, you know, but um, if you do it in this artificial way where you're doing like a CrossFit workout or something like that, where you're going over and over and over, there's going to get a point where your body's not going to be able to keep up because it's a costly energy wise. It's costly to do that. And so, you know, at that point, like, you know, be specific to your training, supplement with some carbs, things like that. Now, as far as like the longevity for me, I can tell you that like, I, in the grand scheme of things, I, where I am now is about to be 42. I, I value the um, consistency of energy, the consistency of like, you know, mental energy and the consistency of the way I look like I don't have these days where I'm big bloated and real small. I look the same all the time, which is really cool. Um, so, but if I was younger, I wouldn't be this way. And even now, even now, like I always in the summer, I incorporate more carbs um you have to be intuitive like you 
One thing that I love about keto is when you remove your carbs, you have like, you get rid of this background noise and you get more sensitive to different changes. So that's really good. Um, and so that trains you to learn how to listen to your body, which we, most of the, most of us don't do. And, um, and so like, I can tell you that there's sometimes when I'll just be like, it's time for some rice, man. You know, I need some sushi, something like that. And you gotta be able to, to, to be, you know, um, be just, you know, kind of real with yourself and, and be, um, sensitive to, to those things. Let's know your body. So I think like, you know, there's people that can do it forever and do the same, but I think that is a, like a kind of a genetic soup thing. Like if you're, if you're genetic soup, uh, just perfectly, your genes are perfectly set up for that, to do that all the time. And there are, there are people that feel best with keto or carnivore and, um, they can't even handle the occasional, uh, sugar, let alone grain, you know, like I can do rice. Um, I can do every Friday. My wife makes a sourdough challah bread, you know, like, um, and, and, um, and we're going to have that today. So, you know, you just gotta be, uh, and also just keto can be kind of stressful for people. You know, it can be just, uh, carbs are, they, they modulate serotonin. You know, when you have an insulin boost, from eating carbs that immediately brings down cortisol. Insulin and cortisol have a um, inverted, uh, they have an inverse relationship. So, you know, if you're living a really stressful lifestyle and you add keto and you add intermittent fasting all at the same time and you think more is better, like, like hold up there, like your whole, your allostatic load is gonna over your stress bucket, it's gonna overflow. So, you know, things like that, like I noticed that with my, you know, older patients or older um, clients, like, that that they're more especially like perimenopausal menopausal postmenopausal they're more sensitive to stress so i may include with them like a like a starch for dinner like some sweet potato because they have that they'll be able to get that cortisol down so their mind is not racing at night and they can rest at night so those are just things that you gotta as you go on it's not as simple as like with everything else it's not as simple as like cut your carbs like no now what else i gotta manage my light i gotta figure out like you know uh, what other, you know, um, things in my environment, I got to get rid of the plastic. I got to get rid of the fragrances in my personal care products and cleaning products. These are things that should continue to go that way because our society is completely against us being healthy. It's just designed that way. You know, all these EDCs I'm with you, man. We talked about that on a past episode. Um, really good stuff there. I love being fat adaptive. I've noticed that when I've gotten myself into that state, so here's my last question for you on this. And then I, I have another subject that we have to hit before we land the plane on this. Um, but becoming fat adaptive, do you have to go full blown keto to get into a fat adaptive state? And what that means for our audience listening is just where your body prefers to burn fat. And um, I've been there before and it's been easy to maintain. And I did keto to kind of get into that zone. Um, What's the best way if someone wants to start making these changes or they're like, hey, I want to become fat adaptive where my body burns it much more easily and efficiently? Man, there's just there's so many like um, levels to it. So like, obviously, if you're eating a high carb diet and you go like on a paleo diet, which may not be as low carb um, because you, you may be eating 150, 200 grams of, of carbs a day, um, that will help, you know, um, intermittent fasting alone if you just make the window smaller where you're eating carbs, you have, you give your body more time to um, basically clear that glucose out of your blood and lower your insulin levels to the point where you will be burning more fat. But just becoming fat adaptive just means like our typical modern day people because of our diets and our lifestyles have a very little metabolic flexibility. In other words, like they are mostly relying on sugar. You know, like you get someone like in our modern day, you know, culture and you get them to about, let's say 50 to 55% of their VO2 max, which is their maximum, you know, sprinting as hard as they can. And at that point, they're going to be burning 50%, more than 50% of the fuel is going to be coming from sugar. Whereas someone who becomes fat adapted, they can get up to from like 75 to 80% of their max or of their vo2 max and if you want to look into that um it's the uh the faster study it's called the faster study they, they they showed like these fat adapted athletes they could they could move further into closer to their vo2 max using fat as fuel so what does that do 
that saves your glycogen reserves that buffers um you know like the lactic threat like it, it moves your lactic threshold up so like you have you're able to perform good and your body's technically not feeling it and you're not getting as broken down so that's a huge thing not to mention you know you want to be in a fat burning state and so like intermittent fasting is a great one low carb you know if you want to um one thing that I recommend everybody does is have a high protein breakfast. You know, everybody should be having a high protein breakfast. And and I have changed in that because I, the whole stuff with intermittent fasting, we've learned so much. Like I'm not against intermittent fasting. Um, uh, it's not that I'm against intermittent fasting now, but I just like my thing used to be like a lot of people is defaulting to like that 16, eight, where you're like fasting from 8 PM to 12 PM. And just everything that I've learned about leptin in the last year, like when you think about the fact that leptin, it's a satiety hormone, it's lowest in the morning and cortisol is highest in the morning. Well, if you're going to intermittent fast, then, you know, it's better to me to do it from like nine to five or, you know, or, or what, whatever that would be, what it would be, uh, eight hours would be, yeah, nine to five, you know, eat from nine to five or eat from eight to 4 p.m., then it would be 12 to 8 p.m because that doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you that you'll actually do even better um, eating in a 12 hour window, like eating from like seven to seven or six to six, then you're doing eating in that eight hour window of 12 to eight, because you want to get your protein in early in the morning. Um, so these are things that help you get fat adapted. Your, your body for example, leptin, why is it so important to burning fat is because the two jobs that it does is it tells your brain that you're not, that you're not starving and in turn tells your body to burn fat. So what if the things that we think are improving our ability to burn fat are actually contributing to our inability to burn fat? So like skipping that breakfast is a huge one. Um, so getting that protein in, but like in general, getting fat adapted is like phases. So like by by like three months, you'll be kind of keto adapted and you'll be able to tell like, let's say you were doing the peace strips and you were showing in ketosis and in, a, in three weeks to a month even, those will start to show as false negatives, which is an indication that you're not peeing out as much um, on, on the strip. And then what will happen at a year in, if you're doing the blood strips, is you'll see that the, the, your blood ketones will continue to go up in a year. This is a there's a study called the Verda study that showed this, but then as you um, are burning more fat, you're gonna your your ketones will no longer even be in your blood because the first thing you need to do is teach your muscles to run on ketones, but eventually the ultimate goal is to teach your muscles to run on fat, and all those ketones are no longer in your blood and they're in your brain. Now that could be done through like a year and a half of kind of low carb and going back and forth, or that can be done with like a year of like keto, but like if there's, there's no rush, it's just a matter of like over time, you will get to that point to the point where I can eat 300 carbs and I wake up the next day in ketosis. It's the craziest thing ever because your body just knows how to burn fat that way. So it's cool. All right. I have more questions here, but we have to, I know it's not, I know I, it's I not, I know it's thing. not like, uh, I, 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 I got, it was not specific, but the bottom line is lower the carbs, you know, not no, it was very good. Okay. No, I think there was a lot there, but you you said something specifically that I've been doing that I might have to read. Don't worry, that was, that, that was me. That was me. That was me, man. That was me. <laughs> all, right. all right. So this is where I want to go. Um, Danny, a lot of the guys that are listening to this show right now, they're they're what I call ambitious Christian men. Um, they're hustling, they're climbing the ladder, they're entrepreneurs. Um, some of them have online businesses. And if they don't right now, there's a passion project, there's something on their heart that they want to do. You've been in this space, right? With Fat Fueled Family, with everything you've been building. And you shared a little bit that you're gonna be making some changes. We talked about that before we hit record today. Um, can you, if you could take liberty just to share what you feel comfortable sharing, because I think there's some lessons in here because I wanna frame it up this way, that we've all bought into the marketing hype that we should just do whatever we want, um, that we can do these simple formulas, we can have a great business and it doesn't really showcase the hard work of entrepreneurship, the ups and the downs. And then our ego gets attached to that. And then when things don't go well, which you've already started at the beginning of this episode to talk about that, what that's like, 
and now you're in a new place. So walk us through that because I want to hear how you're handling it. And if you could just inform you know, as much as you want to share with the listeners of what you're doing right now and how you're making some adjustments. Man, I, I never thought I'd be doing this, but I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to talk about this in public. Um, so number one, I've learned a lot in the last four and a half years. It was August of 2017, 2018 when I left and here I am now. So I, when I left, um, you know, the corporate world, I was making a quarter million dollars a year. I, you know, had, I was able to build a house for my wife. I was able to, um, you know, create a good cushion for us for like our safety. Um, I was able to take my wife and, and do all types of things with my kids that, that have the resources to do any, everything that I'd want to do to, that I believed would help enhance the, you know, what I'm doing with my sons and things like that. And, um, and I just have to, this is kind of like a cautionary tale because, you know, I don't want to, you know, step on anybody's dreams. I'm just going to share my story. And for me, I'm a terrible alpha. I'll say it. I'm a terrible alpha. I am an awesome Bravo. I am a fantastic number two guy, number three guy. Like I, we can't all be alphas. We can't all be alphas. And that's the thing that, that like, you know, you know, you're like, you're right. Like there's like, especially if you're in like putting the content out that I put and doing the business that I, that I do, I get targeted for the ads of like all these things, like simple formula, how to generate leads, how to do this, how to do that, like how to, you know, and, um, and I will tell you that there are people in this world, perfect example. I, I had a two hour conversation with one of my best friends, Robert Sykes, and he is, a. Uh, to, like when it comes to like business development, like he is just, he can talk about this as much as we can talk about parenting and, 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 and all that stuff. Like he loves it, you know? And, and I think it's interesting, but I don't love it as much. I, I, I personally, you know, I love sales. I love certain components. Um, but I'll be honest, like, you know, as a businessman, the last several years, I had to decide which opportunities were good and which opportunities were not. I had to, you know, it was easy when I was a sales guy, when I was having a directive from the home office that was to say like, you know, we, this is what we're focusing on and this is what we're doing. And there's no doubt there. Like, I know what I'm going to do. I, you follow that and you, and you do, you know, you do the activity, you, um, obviously, you know, your, your customers and you know how to differentiate yourself. You're going to do awesome. Um, and so like, I, I went through, I've gone through like a lot of ups and downs this last four and a half years. And, and I'm grateful for it because I remember looking back and I'm just like, so disappointed at how ungrateful I was back then, because I was waking up every morning, throwing on scrubs and sneakers, going into operating rooms and just like, you know, just helping guys out with their surgeries and, and, and you know, doctors and and, and just like adding value here, adding value here. Like this is where, you know, your office could be doing better in here. And oh, this protocol is really good for pain. Like, like this is what so-and-so. So I, I was like, and I made very, very good money. And, and, you know, because our, um, our roles in our house were very clear. And I loved that. It was like, Bobby goes to work, Bobby comes back. Papi, Papi comes home. He's the hero. You know, mommy's home with the kids. Took him to the library today. Took him to this, that. You know, and and it was amazing. So the last four and a half years, like I did make it work, and I did do several things that, like, I'm grateful for. I got to take my family on all types of trips. We had our, you know, companies that we work with would fly us out and things like that. And 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 um but i did learn a lesson and like i said i'm not an alpha you know i'm a good bravo and i i have for the past six weeks really been focusing on getting back into my old industry and like i told you before we started doing this and typical guy type of thing like it's probably a year late like i should have done this a year ago um and i would have saved myself and my family an extra year of of grief um, because like, you know, it's, you know, number one, our number one job is security for the home, you know, not just keeping them safe, but making them feel safe financially and all that. And that's, 
that's something that, you know, if you are a young guy and you don't have kids and you don't have a wife and you think that you can put in that work and do it, but like, it's not your job to follow your dream. If that's going to take, take your family down with you into like financial, um, you know, insecurity and things like that. And, and I remember like, there's like, I remember going through that process as a younger guy with my wife, where we kind of climbed up and we got to a specific point. And, and I'll say that, you know, money definitely does not buy happiness, but it does help give you more freedom. It helps, gives you options and it helps give you peace of mind with certain things. And um, so that's why I've decided to get back into that. I'm going to scale back on the business side of this. I have my passion. This, this is a great side hustle. I, I've just decided that it's not a great main gig for me. Wow. Um, thanks for sharing it, number one. I mean, being really transparent, vulnerable. And there's so many lessons here, Danny, because I see guys and I talk to guys that are young. And like you said, you could take on more risk if you're young and you don't have huge responsibilities. But I get nervous for people when I see them, when they have a family or they have responsibilities and they're chasing a dream and they want to go all in and cut everything that's where I get a little bit nervous. And obviously it's different for everyone. So I'm not being prescriptive here. You got to follow where the Lord's leading you, what's on your heart, the opportunity, and obviously weigh the risk and reward. Um, but I really admire you so much because our ego could keep us in the place of like, hey, I'm going backwards if I go back to that. And you're really putting your family first. And you're also finding that, hey, I like doing Oh, this. yeah, so I'm grateful happy, for it. I'm grateful for the right? opportunity. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, there's a... Um... You know, there's like, there's a double-edged sword. It's like, you have to just be realistic with where you are. Like, don't think that your 401k job is secure, which is true, but also don't use that as a, an excuse for why you're always living insecure. Well, a 401k job isn't secure. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty secure. The only thing that, you know, you can get laid off and things like that, but, but in general, it's pretty secure and having a 401k in particular is secure. I like that, you know, and you know, in insurance, when you have kids, like you gotta, you know, obviously you never, per, you never, um, you never, what's the word, um, compromise on your morals and your ethics. You, I would never advocate doing that. You know, like I've had, I've had people that are close to me. And it's like, you do whatever it takes. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's not how this works. I can't just go work for this company or that company. That's not going to happen. And it's the same way that, you know, these hypothetical situations, what if you were here and it was life or death, would you do this? And I would say, no, I would trust God that he would provide for me. He would do something. So like, why do we have to go with these crazy hypotheticals when that's not really what life is all about? Life is about these normal decisions that you do every day. And then there's these big ones and, and you can get cocky because I've been a risk taker. I've been like, I've been you know, calculated risk and, and, and daring. And, and, you know, that's a typical high testosterone guy type of thing is like, be decisive. Right. And up until this point, it's always done well for me. And I've always taken us in the right direction. And I can say, I definitely won't say that I regret doing it at all. I really don't. I will say, like I said, like I told you already that I would have, I should have done this a year earlier. Um, but you know, God is very patient and he's his long suffering is nothing long suffering, nothing like yeah, that faithful. so um and 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 i know that i'm stupid i know that i'm a i'm a, I'm a hard-headed guy and i need to learn through struggle and um and it just makes everything so much you just so much more grateful for for the things that especially if you get a second chance in in, in anything to be honest yeah. So we want to take healthy risks, risk that the Lord leads us yeah. into, but not be reckless. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm thankful for you, man. It's fun. Thanks, and I'm brother. excited for you and what the future holds yeah. with, uh, with everything. The Lord's got his hand on your life. It's powerful. And, you know, we'll do, uh, we'll do a part two to Heck this yeah. eventually. <laughs> um, would love to have you yeah, back I on would and think we're going to do some other stuff together. I would say, I would say I have you on my podcast, but we're like on a hiatus on, for a while. It's like hard <laughs> to get us both on the same one. But um, but yeah, man, we we I would love to do more with you, and um, this was a lot of fun, brother. Yeah, man. So tell um, tell our listeners where they can connect with you. We'll drop all the links. Anything that you got going on that you want to tell people about? Yeah. So um, for just regular my content, Danny Vega or Danny Vega on Instagram, Danny Vega 
And then, you know, if you want to do a consult, if you want to listen to our podcast, if you want to look at coaching with me, that's um, fatfueled.family. So fatfueled family, we couldn't get .com. So we made .family the, the, the end of it. So it's fatfueled.family and uh, you'll see all of our stuff on there. Awesome. It was an honor having you on, brother. Thanks, brother. Until the next time, guys, let's raise the standard. Hey guys, my name is Josh Kachadorian. I'm the author of the book, The Standard, Discovering Jesus as the Standard for Masculinity. And I just put together a brand new challenge for you, the ambitious Christian man. If you're in business, if you wanna reach your full capacity, if you wanna unlock your potential, I need to tell you there is an unfair advantage that is available to all Christian men, but not all access it. That's why I put together this free 11 day email challenge. Click the link below, sign up for the challenge, and you will get equipped with the knowledge, the resources, and everything you need to take your promised land and learn how to partner with your unfair advantage. Can't wait to see you in the challenge.